Okay, in this video I just want to discuss another protein sequence problem here. And what I have here is consider the following, it says consider the following sequence. Now this is just one long polypeptide chain here that's extending all the way through. So this whole thing, including this piece over here, are all part of the same chain. And the first question wants me to say, where might bends or beta turns occur? So I'm looking at this sequence here, all these amino residues, and I'm asked where might a beta bend, or, be, or rather a beta turn, occur. Well, the thing to know about beta turns, this is the key point, and the most important thing to solving this problem, is that beta turns So what I want to say is beta turns occur at proline residues. So beta turns occur where proline beta turns occur where pro, proline residues are. And if we look at this chain up here, we actually have a couple of prolines. I'll try to underline them here. So there's one there, and there's another one over here. So this occurs at position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's position 7. And this is position 19. So at position 7 and 19, we're likely to see beta turns. Now you might be saying, well, why, it, why would we see beta turns there? What, what makes, what's so special about proline? And the key to proline is that the amino group the amino group. So you might remember this from organic chemistry. I'll put this. I it's I M I N O. So the amino group readily assumes the cis configuration, which is good for beta for forming these beta turns. So proline residues are in the cis configuration, which accommodates turns well, and that's why it's important. And that's why and that's why these beta turns tend to occur at proline residues. So what I'll say here is that. Proline residues, so proline residues in the cis configuration, so proline residues in the cis configuration accommodate turns well. And remember, I said the reason that these proline residues, these proline residues in this configuration accommodate turns well is because this amino group is because this amino group readily assumes the cis configuration. So peptide bonded amino groups readily as, readily assume the cis configuration. So that's that's why these proline residues occur there. So the most likely place to see beta turns is at position 7 and position 19. So that answers our first question. And our sex, second question says, where might interchain disulfide, where might interchain disulfide cross linkages be formed? Well, if we remember disulfide bonds, so disulfide bonds occur between two cysteine residues, so a cysteine residue and a cysteine residue. So if I was looking at my polypeptide up here, I would be looking for two cysteine residues, and I can see one here, and I can see another one up here. So the disulfide cross, or the disulfide linkage, would occur at positions 13 and 24, because this is these are the only two here, so position 13, and 24 over here. So basically these two, if this chain were folded here in a different configuration, would be able to form a disulfide bond here. So if you recall what that is, it's just you have say your CH2 over here from your cysteine, you have an S, S, CH2. This is the disulfide bond here. So I just wanted to show that real quick. And we can do the last problem. <clears throat> it says, assuming the sequence is part of a larger protein, indicate the location of the following. Aspartic acid, isoleucine, theranine, alanine, 
um, glutamine, and lysine. So where would these be? So the, well, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to say surface for the residue, and I'm going to list the residues that I think would be found on the surface, and I'm just going to say inside. And I'm going to list those as the residues that I would feel would be on the inside of the um, protein, folded inside. So the ones that are going to be on the surface, well, we know that they're going to be polar polar residues and possibly charged, so anything polar and charged I'm going to be thinking could be on the um, surface. So aspartic acid is polar and charged, we know that's going to be on the surface. Lysine is also polar and charged, so we know that's also going to be on the surface. Um, glutamine, so GLN will also be on the surface because that's polar as well. And then also on the inside here we know we're going to have isoleucine and we also know we're going to have alanine. A L A. So those are the two that would be on the inside and the one interesting one is theranine which that's polar on charged so this is polar and on charged so it can occur on the surface so it can occur on the surface or inside so it, it can actually occur in the surface or inside for theranine so um, you know you might recall another example I gave with serine which is very similar to theranine um, and that I said could form as long as it had a hydrogen bonding partner so another group it could form a hydrogen bond with like two serine residues it could occur on the inside because actually the polarity of the bond would be decreased a little bit um, by forming the hydrogen bond allowing it to interact with the um, nonpolar residues so um, on the inside of the protein so you know that's pretty much the answers to these questions um, hopefully it's helpful